just a couple of, of main points from, from the aspect psychology framework. Jane came up with the term of, of explaining Seth as a personogram, and it's an interesting analogy or metaphor. Basically, that the source self, the psyche, the soul, sends communications to us, but actually puts a persona on it. And it's, it's like a telegram, an inner telegram. She called it a personogram, personogram, as a framework one construction. Seth called it a bridge personality, you know, a Seth-Chain hybrid. And the point I want to make here, from what I can observe with channeling, when we look at Jane and the tape, the one tape that we have of her channeling Seth, we are not talking to Seth in, let's just say, framework four for speculative purposes. I, I, I extrapolate that from the Elias information where he claims his native focus of attention is in regional area four, which is uh, cosmologically similar to Seth's framework four. So I'm just putting that out there as a data point. So if Seth's native reality is in framework four or thereabouts, we're still seeing Jane in physical idea construction in physical form, speaking in English, not German, not Latin, not any other language, in a framework one construct. So the bridge personality, we tend to sometimes confuse as Seth from framework four, and he's speaking English, and he knows you know, the latest sports scores or whatever. Um, and this gets into discernment and interpretation down the road, but this structure is important. You know, is Seth autonomous? I think so, can I prove it? I can't prove it directly, but there's a lot of information that hints that, yes, at these other frameworks of consciousness, uh, there is an autonomous focus of attention. I like that word, focus of attention in different frameworks. And Linda asked uh, Ron today to define his use of the word universe, because he said Seth and universe, and then uh, Robert Monroe and universe. And she was wrestling with this, these levels of reality and whatnot. So this kind of language, I think, is a little more specific and helps to situate potentially where they're coming from. I love these pictures. Rodney Davidson, by the way, took these pictures years ago. I, th this was at the Elmira 97 uh, conference. I want to talk for two or three minutes on chapter 24 of Psychic Politics. This is Jane Roberts as a theorist, and she, it's actually called Stages of Consciousness. And as a theorist, she's wrestling with stages that develop linearly. She's wrestling with something she called strands of consciousness. And this is something that we'll come back to. And she's also wrestling with states, which come and go, like sleeping and waking. And so stage one, she just lists, and I just summarize these, uh, the beginnings of unofficial information, major attention getting. In Jane's case, perhaps it was the universe's idea construction, that first knock on the head, something was going through, and then the Ouija board work later on, being in stage one. In stage two, because this, these, let's just say the psychic abilities, inner senses are manifesting more, the interpretation of those still tend to get cast through scientific and pseudo-religious interpretations. They dominate in stage two, according to Jane. Next, please. In stage three, the way she casts this, this is where a new, a metamorphosis, a butterfly emerges, and the focus personality fully accepts a new orientation and she actually used the religious notions of the death of self or the will, even though she, she said it's distorted the Eastern forms. She, she qualified that. Uh, but that there's a new orientation. And she obviously went through this herself. And then the next one, stage four, this is where these multiple aspects begin to dominate, multiple strands of consciousness, as she called them. And it is relativistic. The frontal self, the focus personality, I'm, I'm dipping into integral language. I'll wait till I get to that. The focus personality no longer sees itself as the only thing. It's, it understands itself as the primary aspect of the focus personality, but it understands that it's connected to all these other aspect selves. And then she just mentions beyond that, if you can't see that, it says beyond states of ecstasy and mystical uh, bliss. That, that are almost impossible to imagine. And she probably got that from her Catholic training and upbringing where that's part of, part of Catholic mythology. 
So she has four stages of development of the psychic abilities in psychic politics. Next, please. In Adventures in Consciousness, she lists an appendix in the back of her different aspects. We're just going to go through them. Seth, that we know. Next, please. Seth, two. Sumari, Cyprus. And this Sumari singing happened in ESP class. She mentioned Sumari poetry and math. I believe this is more so in the archives at Sterling now. This was not published. This material is not publicly available. Uh, but she mentions it briefly. Next, please. At the very bottom, it says Sumari. But Sumari is different from the Sumari singing in pantomime. It's an inner silence that transforms itself. Jane talked about getting sounds too slow, too fast. And I mean, what an amazing talent she had and, and the way of describing her own phenomenology in these books. So she, she called that a different aspect. Seven is her aspect that wrote the uh, Oversoul Seven books. Helper is someone, is an energy that she never followed up very much. Rich Kendall, an ESP class member, told a story in Elmira about uh, having a, a physical problem and Jane sent Helper to him and he was able to corroborate separately that something happened energetically and his problem went away. A special state, a stronger version of Sumari. So four of these eight so far deal with the Sumari phenomenon. I'm mentioning the reincarnational dramas that she talks about in Adventures here. She also mentions that aspects can be used as a type of therapy. And in fact, past life regression that is part of clinical practice, transpersonal practice, is actually a version of aspect psychology. Probable selves, probable selves, big, a big area. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but I had to put that in. We'll consider those aspects also. Next, please. All right. What Jane produced from these aspects is very creative. The library, I mean, how many of us would love to sit down in our studio and have the far corner, you know, morph and shimmer and turn, and there's your double, and there's a book, and whatever sort of thing, uh, that she could, at will, connect with that level of reality. Uh, a very high development in her part. Next, please. From the library, we get the codicils. That icon is a bug. It's supposed to be after the quote. Uh, all it's Joanne's. No, no, I don't. We're, we, we're beyond that. <laughs> we don't do that uh, anymore. Um, <laughs> all creation is sacred and alive, each part connected to each other part, and each communicating in a creative, cooperative commerce in which the smallest and the largest are equally involved. I'm just going to come over here and read off the screen here. Chain writes, Acceptance of these first codicils, I think the first five came in a block, would require expanded practical knowledge of the self. Break would expand practical knowledge of the self. Break down barriers that are the result of our prejudiced perception. A focused personality's perception is prejudiced because it creates constructions. And restructure personal, social, and political life. Concepts of the self and practical experience of the self must be broadened if the race is to develop its true potentials. Only an evolution in consciousness can alter the worldview that appears to our official line of consciousness. Next, please. The codicil is a very powerful set of, a, a, a codicil is an addendum to a will. So a will sets up an estate sort of like a blueprint. So these are like an addendum to a blueprint. And it was Jane's way of offering some additional information for us down the road. I mentioned her poetry. Uh, the Psychic Manifesto is basically where she tells the Osama bin Ladens, Jerry Falwells, and Richard Dawkins of the world to fuck off. <laughs> In no uncertain terms, yeah. you know. In very poetic terms. And she, and she in, encountered personalities like that. So it's a very passionate thing. The God of Jane is another beautiful concept, personalizing a connection with all that is. Cuts out the middleman. And all the esoteric mystery schools have done this from day one. This is not new to us. But the God of Jane was her way of trying to put this in a postmodern context. Organized religion versus person-centered spirituality. You don't need a church and organization uh, to have that direct connection 
with source. The American vision at the end of uh, God of Jane is an egalitarian democratic view of spirit. She, Seth had given material in the individual and the nature of mass events, criticizing Freud and Darwinism, their dark sides. And, and she realized these were European creations and still very much a part of the European psyche, collective psyche, and affecting certainly 20th century history. Uh, and she looked at Walt Whitman and Thoreau and Emerson and that rugged individualism and the American spirit and, and the nature of democracy in America. And she was inspired to a vision of spirit moving forward. That's a, a beautiful ending to these aspects of books. I will. We're in an interlude. I don't. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that your mind is grasping still. That's good. Uh, speaking of which, I wanted to say, Chris. Chris Johnson should probably speak after dinner when you're all sitting there with full bellies. Is much more entertaining than I am being this evening. But uh, we're doing the best we can up here. Um, so this is a quote from Aldous Huxley. Science is not enough. Religion is not enough. Art is not enough. Politics and economics are not enough. Nor is love, nor is duty, nor is action, however disinterested, nor however sublime is contemplation. Nothing short of everything will really do. This, this is the beginning of an integral worldview emerging. What does integral mean? Balanced, inclusive, comprehensive. Here's imagery of the, uh, this is the yidam, a Buddhist symbol of divine masculine. And yeah, the guy is bigger, right? And the girl's little. Okay, and the girl's back is to us, right? And the guy's facing us. Recognizing that, still, there is a beautiful, beautiful metaphor being represented by that union of masculine and feminine energies. Next. There are two uh, practical integral psychologies out there in the world right now. Ken Wilber's Aqual and we'll be talking about that, AQAL, and Don Beck's Spiral Dynamics. And I thank Chris for mentioning those in his presentation this afternoon. I will be talking about Aqua shortly, and Joanne will be talking about Don Beck's Spiral Dynamics Integral uh, on Saturday. And Spiral Dynamics is an integral look at the development of belief systems. And as a Sethian, when I found this, it was, oh my god, there's a science, a developmental science of belief systems. So I find that very relative. The final main point here about the integral approach is Seth's dream art science has always been a gold standard for me in the material, looking ahead, down the road, evolutionarily for the potentials of humanity. We're nowhere near that collectively. There are little, little clusters, cloisters of this type of consciousness emerging now. But what I found in studying Wilbur's work and Beck's work is what I think is the blueprint, sort of the stepping stone. These are heralds at the bridge in the next hundred years towards Seth's dream art science manifesting collectively in, in a major way. So that's why it just blew me away when I found this years ago. And by the way, I should mention that I came into this through Norm Friedman's Bridging Art and Science book. That's how I was introduced to Ken Wilber. He mentions the Atman Project, his uh, third book, and uh, it's impenetrable. It's really polysyllabic and charts and I mean I couldn't read it all those years ago. It's taken me years to understand it. But uh, it's an interesting connection of bridging science and spirit that led me to this integral approach. Next. We have pre-modern, modern and post-modern knowledge available for the first time. Jane if she wanted it, could have sought it out in her time. She chose not to. She focused on what she focused on in her context in the Elmira area. But Wilbur is about uh, 15 years, you know, 20 some years 
younger than Jane. So he was of a generation that came in and started researching these things when he was in his 20s. Next, please. It's based on extensive cross-cultural studies that include shamanic traditions to modern developmental psychology and to postmodern philosophy. The main point, if there's one takeaway for now, is the idea of the integral approach is to touch all the bases of our own personal awareness, our own personal reality. And there's a somewhat sophisticated map that I'm going to go through for about 10 minutes. And it's an, the idea behind it is that it serves as checks and balances to stay in touch with all this. That when we go too far one way or the other, this way, and I don't know that you can read this over here, but uh, we run into all sorts of problems. Next, please. The practical applications, which is the bottom line of any map, uh, of course focuses on personal development, but also focuses on social development. This can be applied to business, to the military, to education, to any human endeavor. And psychology, it's driven by psychology. Ken is a psychologist. His theory is going through five uh, major stages, and everyone has been informed by what he called a spectrum model of, of psychology that went from dust to divinity or from uh, focused personality to pyramid energy gestalts. Next. There are six basic aspects to this map that we're going to go over. These aspects, think of them as a musical scale. We have Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. What a magnificent piece of music that is with the choir coming in, right? Oh, I get chills every time. It's, that can be boiled down to a seven note scale, a D major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. We're going to look at those notes. And the idea then is extrapolating those notes. There's an integral symphony that is potential here down the road to be developed. A reminder that the map is not the territory. It's just a map. Framework one map, by the way. And we're going to do a guided awareness of our tour right now. A, a guided tour of our awareness right now of these six aspects, just to do a little self-inquiry. First of all, ask yourself, do you s use these terms when you speak? Do you speak from a first-person perspective, I? Do you speak from a second-person or first-person plural, we? Do you refer to it or its sometimes? Well, these are the four quadrants in your own awareness being expressed through language. Lines up to two dozen multiple intelligences. The question we ask here is, are you better at some things than other things? Do you play the piano better than you ride a bike? What are your interpersonal relationships like? What is your reading skill like, etc.? There's been a lot of research done on what are called lines cognition. You can see the different ones there. Levels is, is a tricky one. It's a general altitude or center of gravity of our overall stage of development. We think back to Jane's stages of development. We talk about it generally as, a, as an average or a ballpark. So don't take these integral pronouncements literally. If you do, they're, they're worthless. They're essentially worthless. They're only meant to ballpark certain general areas of personal development. And the question you ask yourself here, do I remember being an infant? Do I remember being a child, an adolescent, an adult? perhaps a senior. Well, these are stages or levels that you've gone through physically and psychologically as well. Next, please. States, every 24 hours we go through waking, dreaming, deep, dreamless sleep. Next. Types, typologies, masculine, feminine voices. There's that theme again of masculine, feminine energies. Go to the next one because we'll come back to that. And last, the sixth note in our scale here is the self-system, which is the navigator and integrator of all the above. And the self-system, if you think back to that first white chart with the levels of reality and levels of selfhood, the self-system is all of that. It is all that is. That's what's being described here, attempted to be described here, understanding that the map is not the territory. Next, please.
should also mention that all the music you're hearing tonight, I composed and arranged and produced myself. And it is available on a CD in the back of the room called Mindscapes, if you are interested in that. Next, please.